We just heard the president say that he would be with his supporters as they marched to the Capitol. Even though uh, he did not end up going, he certainly wanted to. Um, some have questioned whether President Trump genuinely planned to come here to the Capitol on January 6th. In his book, Mark Meadows falsely wrote that after President Trump gave his speech on January 6th, he told Mr. Meadows that he was, quote, speaking, meta speaking metaphorically about the walk to the Capitol. As you will see, Donald Trump was not speaking metaphorically. As we heard earlier, Rudy Giuliani told Ms. Hutchinson that Mr. Trump plans to travel to the Capitol on January 6th. I want to pause for just a moment uh, to ask you, Ms. Hutchinson, to explain some of the terminology you will hear today. We've heard you use two different terms to describe plans for the president's movement to the Capitol or anywhere else. One of those is a scheduled movement, and another one is OTR. Could you describe for us what each of those mean? A scheduled presidential movement is on his official schedule. It's notified to the press and to a wide range of staff that will be traveling with him. It's known to the public, known to the Secret Service, and they're able to coordinate the movement days in advance. An off-the-record movement is confined to the knowledge of a very, very small group of advisors and staff Typically, a very small group of staff would travel with him, mostly that are just included in the national security package. You can pull an off-the-record off movement together in less than an hour. Um, it's a way to kind of circumvent having to release it to the press, if that's the goal of it, or to not have to have as many security parameters put in place ahead of time to make the movement happen. Thank you. And let's turn back now to the President's plans to travel to the Capitol on January 6th. We know that White House Counsel Pat Cipollone was concerned about the legal implications of such a trip, and he agreed with the Secret Service that it shouldn't happen. Ms. Hutchinson, did you have any conversations with Pat Cipollone about his concerns about the President going to the Capitol on January 6th? On January 3rd, Mr. Cipollone had approached me knowing that Mark had raised the prospect of going up to the Capitol on January 6th. Mr. Cipollone and I had a brief private conversation where he said to me, we need to make sure that this doesn't happen. This would be a, legally a, a terrible idea for us. We're, we have serious legal concerns if we go up to the Capitol that day. And he then urged me to continue relaying that to Mr. Meadows because it's my understanding that Mr. Cipollone thought that Mr. Meadows was indeed pushing this along with the president. And we understand, Ms. Hutchinson, that you also spoke to Mr. Cipollone on the morning of the 6th as you were about to go to the rally on the ellipse. And Mr. Cipollone said something to you like, make sure the movement to the Capitol does not happen, is that correct? That's correct. I saw Mr. Cipollone right before I walked out onto West Exec that morning, and Mr. Cipollone said something to the effect of, please make sure we don't go up to the Capitol, Cassidy. Keep in touch with me. We're going to get charged with every crime imaginable if we make that movement happen. And do you remember which crimes Mr. Cipollone was concerned with? In the days leading up to the 6th, we had conversations about potentially obstructing justice or defrauding the electoral count. Let's hear uh, about some of those concerns uh, that you mentioned earlier uh, in one of your interviews with us. Having a private conversation with Pat late in the afternoon of the 3rd or the 4th. Um, that Pat was concerned it would look like we were obstructing justice or obstructing the electoral college count. And I, I apologize for probably not being so uh, <laughs> very firm with my legal terms here, but um, that it would look like we were obstructing what was happening on Capitol Hill. And he was also worried that it would look like we were inciting a riot or encouraging a riot to erupt on the Capitol, at the Capitol. In fact, in the days before January 6th, and on January 6th itself, President Trump expressed to multiple White House aides 
that he wanted to go to the Capitol after his speech. Here's what various White House aides have told the committee about the president's desire to go to the Capitol. Did the president tell you this, that he wanted to speak at the Capitol? Correct, yes. During the meeting in the dining room, did the, the idea of the president um, proceeding or walking to the Capitol on the 6th after his speech come up? Walking to the Capitol? No. Driving to the Capitol? It came up. Okay, how did it come up and what was discussed? You brought it up. You said, I want to go down to the Capitol. What about him marching to the Capitol on the 6th? Um, yes. Tell us about that. So, this is kind of a general thing. I mean, to get into the specifics of it, I, I was aware of the desire of the president to potentially uh, march to the, uh, or, or accompany the um, rally attendees to the Capitol. When did you first hear about this idea of the president accompanying rally attendees to the Capitol on the 6th? Well, this was at the 6th. This was during the, um, after he finished his remarks. When the president said that he would be going to the Capitol during his speech on the ellipse, the Secret Service scrambled to find a way for him to go. We know this from witnesses and the Secret Service, also from messages among staff on the President's National Security Council. The NSC staff were monitoring the situation in real time, and you can see how the situation evolved in the following chat log that the committee has obtained. As you can see, NSC staff believed that Mogul, the President, was, quote, going to the Capitol, and, quote, they are finding the best route now. From these chats, we also know the staff learned of the attack on the Capitol in real time. When President Trump left the ellipse stage at 1.10, the staff knew that rioters had invaded the inaugural stage and Capitol Police were calling for all available officers to respond. When Republican leader Kevin McCarthy heard the president say he was going to the Capitol, he called you, Ms. Hutchinson. Isn't that right? That's correct. And in this text message, you told Tony Ornato, quote, McCarthy just called me too. And do you guys think you're coming to my office? Tell us about the call that day with Leader McCarthy during the president's speech on the ellipse. I was still in the tent behind the stage. And when you're behind the stage, you, you can't really hear what's going on in front of you. So when Mr. McCarthy called me with this information, I answered the call and he sounded a rush, but also frustrated and angry at me. And I, I was confused because I, I didn't know what the president had just said. Um, he then explained, the president just said he's marching to the Capitol. You told me this whole week, you aren't coming up here. Why would you lie to me? I said, I'm, I'm not lying. I, I wasn't lying to you, sir. I, we're not going to the Capitol. And he said, well, he just said it on stage, Cassidy. Figure it out. Don't come up here. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll run the traps on this and I'll shoot you a text. I, I can assure you we're not coming up to the Capitol. We've already made that decision. He pressed a little bit more, believing me, but I think frustrated that the president had said that. And we ended the phone conversation after that. I called Mr. Renato to reconfirm that we weren't going to the Capitol, and, which is also in our text messages. I sent Mr. McCarthy another text telling him the affirmative that we were not going up to the Capitol, and he didn't respond after that. And we understand, Ms. Hutchinson, that the plans for the president to come up to the Capitol um, had included discussions at some point about uh, what the president would do when he came up to the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, let's look at a clip of one of your interviews discussing that issue with the committee. When you were talking about a scheduled movement, did um, anyone say what the president wanted to do when he got here? No. Not that I can specifically remember. I remember I remember hearing a few different ideas discussed with 
between the Mark and Scott Perry, Mark and Rudy Giuliani. I don't know which conversations were elevated to the president. I don't know what he personally wanted to do when he went up to the Capitol that day. Um, you know, I, I know that there were discussions about him having another speech outside of the Capitol before going in. I know that there is a conversation about him going into the House chamber at one point. As we've all just heard in the days leading up to January 6th, on the day of the speech, both before and during and after the rally speech, President Trump was pushing his staff to arrange for him to come up here to the Capitol during the electoral vote count. Let's turn now to what happened in the president's vehicle when the Secret Service told him he would not be going to the Capitol after his speech. First, here is the president's motorcade leaving the ellipse after his speech on January 6th. Ms. Hutchinson, when you returned to the White House in the motorcade after the president's speech, where did you go? When I returned to the White House, I walked upstairs towards the chief of staff's office, and I noticed Mr. Renato lingering outside of the office. Once we had made eye contact, he quickly waved me to go into his office, which was just across the hall from mine. When I went in, he shut the door, and I noticed Bobby Angle, who is the head of Mr. Trump's security detail, sitting in a chair, just looking somewhat discombobulated and a little lost. Um, and I, I looked at Tony and he had said, did you effing hear what happened in the beast? I said, no, Tony, I, I just got back. What happened? Tony proceeded to tell me that when the president got in the beast, he was under the impression from Mr. Meadows that the off-the-record movement to the Capitol was still possible and likely to happen, but that Bobby had more information. So once the president had gotten into the vehicle with Bobby, he thought that they were going up to the Capitol, and when Bobby had relayed to him, we're not, we don't have the assets to do it, it's not secure, we're going back to the West Wing. The president had very strong, a very angry response to that. Um, Tony described him as being irate. The president said something to the effect of, I'm the effing president, take me up to the Capitol now. To which Bobby responded, sir, we have to go back to the West Wing. The president reached up towards the front of the vehicle to grab at the steering wheel. Mr. Engel grabbed his arm, said, sir, you need to take your hand off the steering wheel. We're going back to the West Wing. We're not going to the Capitol. Mr. Trump then used his free hand to lunge towards Bobby Angle. And Mr. when Mr. Renato had recounted this story to me, he had motioned towards his clavicles. And was Mr. Angle in the room as Mr. Renato told you this story? He was. Did Mr. Angle correct or disagree with any part of the story for Mr. Ornato? Mr. Engel did not correct or disagree with any part of the story. Did Mr. Engel or Mr. Ornato ever after that tell you that what Mr. Ornato had just said was untrue? N neither Mr. Ornato nor Mr. Engel told me ever that it was untrue. And despite this altercation, this physical altercation, during the ride back to the White House, President Trump still demanded to go to the Capitol. Here's what Kaylee McEnany, the White House press secretary at the time, wrote in her personal notes and told the committee about President Trump's desire to go to the Capitol after returning to the White House. When you wrote POTUS wanted to walk to the Capitol, was that based solely on what the president said during his speech or anything that he or anybody else said afterwards? So to the best of my recollection, I believe when we got back to the White House, he said he wanted to physically walk with the marchers. And according to my notes, he then said, uh, 
you'd be fine with just writing the piece. But to the best of my recollection, he wanted to be a part of the march in some fashion. Okay, and just for the record, the piece refers to the presidential limousine? Yes. President Trump did not go to the Capitol that day. We understand that he blamed Mark Meadows for that. So prior to leaving the rally site, when he got off the stage and everybody was making the movement back to the motorcade, I had overheard Mr. Meadows say to him then, as I had prior to Mr. Trump taking the stage that morning, um, that he was still working on getting an off the record movement to the Capitol. So when Mr. Trump took the stage, he was under the impression via Mr. Meadows that it was still possible. So when he got off the stage, I had relayed to Mr. Meadows that I had another conversation with Tony. The movement was still not possible. Mr. Meadows said, okay. And then as they proceeded to go to the motorcade, um, and Mr. Meadows had reiterated, we're gonna work on it. So I talked to Bobby, Bobby has more information. Mark got into his vehicle, to my understanding, Trump got into the beast. And after we had all arrived back at the White House, later in the day, it had been relayed to me via Mark that the president wasn't happy that Bobby didn't pull it off for him and that Mark didn't work hard enough to get the movement on the books. The physical altercation that Ms. Hutchinson described in the presidential vehicle was not the first time that the president had become very angry about issues relating to the election. On December 1, 2020, Attorney General Barr said in an interview that the Department of Justice had now not found evidence of widespread election fraud sufficient to change the outcome of the election. Ms. Hutchinson, how did the president react to hearing that news? Around the time that I understand the AP article went live, I remember hearing noise coming from down the hallway, so I poked my head out of the office and I saw the ballet walking towards our office, he had said, get the chief down to the dining room, the president wants him. So Mark went down to the dining room, came back to the office a few minutes later. After Mark had returned, I left the office and went down to the dining room, and I noticed that the door was propped open and the valet was inside the dining room changing the tablecloth off of the dining room table. He motioned for me to come in and then pointed towards the front of the room near the fireplace mantle and the TV, where I first noticed there was ketchup dripping down the wall and there's a shattered porcelain plate on the floor. The valet had articulated that the president was extremely angry at the attorney general's AP interview and had thrown his lunch against the wall. Um, which was causing them to have to clean up. So I, I grabbed a towel and started wiping the catch up off of the wall to help the valet out. Um, and he said something to the effect of, he's really ticked off about this. I, I would stay clear of him for right now. He, he's really, really ticked off about this right now. And Ms. Hutchinson, was this the only instance that you are aware of where the president threw dishes? It's not. And are there other instances in the dining room that you recall where he expressed his anger? There were, there were several times throughout my tenure with the chief of staff that I was aware of him either throwing dishes or flipping the tablecloth um, to let all the contents of the table go onto the floor and likely break or go everywhere. And Ms. Hutchinson, Attorney General Barr described to the committee the president's angry reaction when he finally met with President Trump. Let's listen. And uh, I said, look, I, I uh, know that you're dissatisfied with me and I'm glad to offer my resignation. And he pounded the table very hard. Everyone sort of jumped and he said, accept it. Mr. Chairman, I reserve. <laughs> 